you don't mind. After the moves to Newcastle, tell us how you feel about that. And would you say for Ireland as well that you're at a bit of a crossroads in your career? Uh, I'm delighted, first off. Uh, I've talked about it being such a big club and I'll, I know the fans won't be in for the first few games or whatever it is, but um, you know, it's, it's something new for me, something different. I've, I'm 28, I've only played for two different clubs, so uh, you know, it's, it's a new challenge and, and I'm looking forward to it. And has Stephen given you an indication that you're part of his plans? Yeah, he, he, the manager's talked to everyone. Um, you know, everyone feels involved and we all know we have to, to fight for the team and fight for our, our positions. And would you say that the atmosphere is, is considerably different? That's a much younger squad, it seems. Yeah, there's, there's a few new uh, younger lads in. Uh, a few of the younger lads have been in already once or twice. And, and it's good. It's good to see. Um, you know, I remember the feeling when, when I was young, getting into the squad. Uh, you know, it's, it's a great honour. And the lads have been with well. You know, it's great to give them a chance. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you. Just to remind everybody, the first 10 minutes are live, the second 10 minutes will be embargoed. When we're coming to the embargo, I'll announce that we're coming to the embargo. So, Guy, would you like to ask a question, please? Jeff, yeah, Nations League tomorrow night, obviously. How important is it in a, in a 14 group that you get something in that first game? Yeah, uh, I think it's important, especially any, any game that, um, you know, there's, there's something on, whether it's the Nations League or the qualifiers, you know, you, you want to get points on the board so it's definitely important yeah how realistic is it do you think that you can win this group i think we have to have the belief and uh, you know you look around our squad and we think we've got good players here and uh, we think we can do something special so um, once you bring that belief in the games but the main thing is you know to get off to a good start and uh, once we do that then then we can look at possibly winning the group Thank you, Jeff. Would you like to go Yeah, I'll, I'll step in there. Uh, Jeff, um, Stephen said during the week that he didn't see you when he was looking at his midfield as one of the deep-lying midfielders, that he had a, a different role in mind for you. Has, has he spoken to you over the couple of sessions you have of, of how he sees you within this team? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Can you tell us what he said? <laughs> I don't want to give him too much away, but um, yeah, obviously he has a, he's worked on his formation and the way he wants us to play, and you know the the deep lawyer is in there to help start the plays and all. But you know whether it's it's me or whoever playing in the the more advanced, you know you, they've got to be disciplined to um, stay away a little bit and keep the room for uh, the deep lawyer, and then. You've got to trust him to, to get us on the ball. If you think back four years ago now, when we came home from Euro 2016, there was such excitement at the time of our new midfield for a new generation of yourself and James McCarthy and Robbie Brady. I think you played one game together since then because of James' injuries and Robbie's problems as well. James is back. How, how big a difference does it make having him potentially in that midfield role? And, and also your thoughts on maybe the three of you getting back together again and how it worked four years ago and, and how you think you can work together? Yeah, uh, it worked really well four years ago, I think. Um, and then it's it's obviously not nice that we got only one chance to play together again. Um, you know, the, the lads had tough times with injuries, but they're both back fit now. Obviously, there's other, other good players as well and four them positions in the squad. But uh, I think it's brilliant to have to have Robbie back and to have James back. Um, you know, I really enjoy playing with James, the, the games I have. Um, I think he's a great player and you know he's, he's just been unlucky with a lot of injuries. Thanks Jeff. Thomas Nibblock is with us on the BBC. Thomas. Thanks Carl. Uh, hi Jeff. Jeff just the strangest moment for you during lockdown and, and the entire Covid process. It's been tricky for everybody but for you personally what's been the, the strangest? Strangest moment? Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, and the the hard, well, the the weirdest thing was obviously finishing up with with Burnley mid season because of COVID, you know, not getting to finish the season. That's that's never happened to me, so that's probably the strangest. 
And how much are you enjoying working under Stephen Kenny? I appreciate it's very early days, but um, just, you know, a freshness, a new manager always brings that, but how have you found it so far? Yeah, it's been brilliant. Uh, like you said, obviously, you know, the, the new manager, new staff, new field, uh, there's always going to be a bit of freshness to it, but uh, we've been on the training pitch, we've been working on different things, and, uh, you know, we can see the ideas they're trying to put across to us, and, you know, it's, then it's, how long does it take to click? Because um, it, it is going to be different. So for us as players, we just got to absorb as, as much information and, and keep working on the, on the training field and, and, you know, get used to it and then put it into practice in the games and, and hopefully it works. Thanks, Jeff. Damien? Jeff, you've not played a competitive game since March because of COVID and what have you. Is that the longest break you've ever had from football and how much have you missed it? Yeah, by far the longest. Uh, well, of course, I mean, um, it was it was different, obviously, because when the lockdown came in, there was nothing to watch, so it was it was just a weird time. I think everyone turned the box sets or, or whatever they could. Uh, but then once the football got back and I wasn't finishing the league off, it was it was hard to you know watch the games run every day. It was exciting. Uh, obviously not as exciting as it would be with the fans but you know the, there was games and, and as a player you always want to play so it was different it was hard but thankfully it sort of it flew in a little bit and then I was able to you know get myself sorted and, and get back into training and into routine Thank you With three minutes left for broadcast if anyone would like to ask another question please Oh, they've had enough of me. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. Uh, just, uh, I think it, uh, the lads said it's been confirmed the last few minutes about Shane Duffy going to Celtic yeah. um, on a season-long loan. I don't know if you've spoken to him about it and how excited about that he is. Uh, yeah, he's excited. Uh, you know, he's, he's a Celtic fan. It's a massive club, massive fan base. Um, it's it's going to be different for him. Uh, he's been in England. He's, he's used to English football, but going up there... Uh, would be great for him. I, th I think he's going to be loved. He's, he's a great player and he gives everything to the team and uh, them sort of fans up there, that's that's what they want to see. And he could 10 in a row, so it could be something special for him. Just in terms of your fitness and not having played a competitive game in so long, are you 100% ready to go for tomorrow night if you're selected? Yeah, always am. <laughs> okay, thank you, Nathan. We're, we're going to wrap up the broadcast section there. So.